because of the very early encounter with the establishment, I'm inclined to ask this question. What do you make of the mindset or dilemma of a people who for the love of liberty came to establish a state, but yet still repeated those same conditions of slavery and perpetuated suppression for the number of years we've just discussed? Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. You know, I'm a great admirer of black men who take the risk of doing things which they felt was an honor to the race. The late, Gav, Gav, uh, the late Marcus Garvey of Sinter Memory always looked at Liberia as a special case of a test of the black man's ingenuity to rule himself and to develop. So did the late George Padmore, not the George Padmore of Liberia, the author of Pan-Africanism of Communism. He was a good friend of Kwame Nkrumah. Liberia has a symbolic relevance for black people all over the world. It was a test of the resolve of people to come. They came, it was tragic, that those who had the foresight, those who understood what needed to be done to create a cohesive society, they lost out in all the power struggle. I gave you a good example. What has been said today? Go back and read E.W. Blyden. Go back and read Dr. Blyden's speech of 1864 when he called for a fusion of the settlers and indigenous people to create harmony within the society. That was 1864. Blyden was a very enlightened man. He had come from the Caribbean. Others came with him who were very knowledgeable of the destiny of these black people. But unfortunately, they were the losers in the power struggle. Blyden was dragged to the streets, Ashmore Street. This is the man who read Latin, Greek, Italian, corresponded with Glassstone of Britain. One of the most erudite black men of his times. They pushed this lie about Blyden that he was having an affair with the wife of E.J. Roy and they dragged Blyden through the streets, Ash, right Ashmore Street. Luckily for Dr. Blyden, some of his students were passing and they rescued Blyden. This noble African crossed the border into Sierra Leone, converted to Islam. His book Islam, Christianity, and the Negro race is a beautiful analysis of the black man's involvement in religion as propagated by the Caucasian West and also by the Arabs. Blyden went to Sierra Leone, abandoned Liberia. He was made director of Islamic education by the British authorities. He never came. Blyden died in Sierra Leone. E.J. Roy was overthrown, was killed. I am saying that those who came and I have an article out, you go back to Google or you get a copy of my book, if not that I'm selling my book, Across the Landscape, I deal with social forces and the struggle for democracy in Liberia. Our tragedy is that those who have the vision, the foresight to unite our people, they never succeeded in this society. Never. Those who were backward, reactionary, had contempt, they won simply because they were men who played dirty and the politics of those days was the politics of intrigues was the politics of intrigue so noble men could not win whether it was Blyden whether it was Alexander Cromwell whether it was Gitwe uh, huh? just name all these people all these people Dr. Moriahs all of them from around this country S. Raymond Horace, very dynamic man who spent years in prison because he refused to bow down. They were great men. And then we come to contemporary times. One of the noblest of all of our people, the late Albert Port, a man who stuck by the constitution, they mock him in the streets of Morovia as he distributed his leaflets, calling on them to pay yield and to rescue themselves 
from the day of damnation. Albert Port to the streets of Morovia. A poor man from Crucible. There were men with vision. Unfortunately in history, they don't win. And when they don't win, those who are given the mantle of power, they rule society in such a way that they create contradictions that then lead to tragedy. Those who came from America were courageous. Were courageous. Others followed them. Understood the society. Almagra made ourselves with those we met here. Blyden said, the sons of the soil must come as one with us. They are our brothers We have come back. We must bring to them the enlightenment that we have taken from overseas. That was Blyden, 1864. We're talking about 2008. There's nothing strange. It has been said by people, by Faulkner and others, by Alexander Cromwell and others. What is strange? What is strange? Open your eyes. They are great people. I'm an admirer of Edwin Barclay, a great poet, a visionary. I love his songs. I remember he was called by an American ambassador, an atheist, and a man who was influenced by nationalistic thought in West Africa. So Tottenham was the man to support 1943 going 44 and after the elections. They have been great people, and this we always emphasize as there have been great and enlightened settlers who understood what needed to be done like Blyden, so there have been backward and reactionary settlers. As there have been great and visionary indigenous Liberians, so have there been backward and very reactionary indigenous people. So your duty as young people is to fuse, fuse the consciousness of those who want to be Liberia. Those from the settler communities who believe that they as black people have a responsibility to show that this nation has much to offer the black man. You who come from the indigenous masses who have achieved your education and want to build a society that will reflect the talent and potential of the black man. Identify yourself. Fuse yourself together. You cannot win. You cannot develop this country by splitting this country into ethnic enclaves. <clears throat> For the first time in our history, we have the opportunity to say we are all Liberians. And we hope, for the sake of our children, that we are not only talking, that we believe that we are all Liberians. That every man must be judged on his skill, his talent, and his ability to perform. Every man and woman, that at the end of the day, we give honor to those whom honor is due. A man must become the leader because he can lead. A man must become chief justice because he has the ability. No position must be sacrosanct. We cannot, for the life of us, continue to wallow in the false hopes that people will sleep that we don't understand. The country needs to be built. A lot has happened. And we do hope the TRC, in its effort, its difficult task of gathering intelligence and gathering data on what happened to our country, will be bold enough, bold enough, to say what has happened to this country. And that those who emerge as leaders will understand it doesn't matter who you are. You can be a Cooper, a Dennis, a Jones, a Simpson, a Tupman, a Flomo, a Quali, a Yakwaru. When you cut yourself, the blood that comes out is red. We're all human beings. It is the, it is the demand of ourselves for the respect to be considered as human beings that lead us to agitate and fight. And we do hope that now we have understood our people are all human beings. They have the right to the wealth of this land. They have the right to see their children grow up and given the opportunity to be doctors, lawyers, engineers, to be president if needs be. 
That is the challenge. That is the task. I hope your generation understands you don't make the blunder that your fathers and grandfathers made. We want to make sure that tomorrow the younger generation will not dance on the graves of those who are hard to learn and who will not listen. I thank you, Mr. Commissioner.